Well, as you know by now, the subject this morning is the tabernacle, the tabernacle of God in the wilderness. And as uh, Joe has pointed out, uh, God gave instructions to Moses and Mount Sinai to build a tent for him, which enabled him to live in the middle of his people. And this tent is often translated the tabernacle. In the very last book of the Bible, Revelation 21, John says this, I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. You see, all the way in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, God has wanted to have fellowship with people. God loves people. And if you love somebody, if you love them enough, you want to live with them. I remember Joe and I uh, had a conversation just before we got married. And I remember her saying, how amazing that you get to live uh, with the person that you love most. And believe me, that was a remarkable thing that she would say that of me. But that's the way God is. He loves us and he wants to spend time with us. So he has found a way to live with us. The problem is with God is, as demonstrated uh, last week in the golden calf story, um, is that God is holy, completely holy. And we are basically inclined to evil. As the Bible says, we all stumble in many ways. So God had Moses build this tabernacle in a way that allowed sinful people to get near to this holy God. And it all revolved around blood, the blood of sacrifice. When you came into the tabernacle, you were immediately faced with a big bronze blood-stained altar on which sacrifices were made continually. In fact, the fire of the sacrifice was never to go out day or night. This bronze altar of burnt offering, as it's sometimes called, is a picture of the cross. And the continual day and night offering is a reminder that the blood of Jesus is powerful to bring us to God at any time through confession of sin and repentance and faith in him. The animals who were being sacrificed daily on this altar were just a type, just a picture of Jesus. Remember John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And when the father saw the lambs being sacrificed in the tabernacle, he was looking not at them, but at another lamb, at his son who would take away the sin of the world in the future. In John 1.14, John said this, And the word became flesh and did tabernacle among us. This is Young's literal translation. The Greek word is skeno, which means to pitch or to live in a tent. The word became flesh. Jesus became flesh and did tabernacle among us. He put on himself uh, our flesh and he lived in this tent for 30 years. He put on this tent, this human body. He tabernacled in the womb of Mary for nine months. Can you imagine that? He tabernacled in Bethlehem for us. He tabernacled through his life, feeling everything that we feel, going through the temptations that we all go through, yet without sin. For 30 years, he lived a perfect life in this earthly tent so that at its conclusion, he would be the spirit spotless lamb, the perfect, all-sufficient sacrifice for the sin of the world. So in the tabernacle, the sinner brought his sacrifice to the altar. He confessed his sin as he laid hands upon the sacrifice, as he identified with that sacrifice. The sacrifice was killed 
and he was declared to be forgiven and reconciled to God. And that same blood was sprinkled on every bit of the furniture in the tabernacle, the laver, which is that giant wash bowl, the table of showbread, the lampstand, the golden altar, and ultimately on the mercy seat itself, which sat upon the Ark of the Covenant. And the reason for this is that there can be no cleansing. There can be no spiritual food. No light, no understanding, no prayer, no worship, no entrance into the very presence of God, no meeting with him or hearing his voice without the shedding of that holy, precious blood. I know several people, you probably do as well, who exercise the gift of loving others very well. You'll find them booking people in for a coffee here or there, or a meal, or a FaceTime call. And when you ask them what they've been doing, they'll say, oh, just meeting someone. Oh, and what did you do? Oh, we, we just talked. That's what God does in the tabernacle. Exodus 25, 22 says these amazing and beautiful words. And there I will meet with you. And from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim that are on the Ark of the Testimony, I will speak with you about all that I'll give you in commandment for the people of Israel. There was a meeting, there was a talking in the tabernacle. And as we approach this new season that God has for us, our own promised land, there is only one way that we can approach God. John the Baptist came and this is what he said, it says of him, he was baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance. That means turning from our sin and turning our faces as we, as we can do this very moment towards God for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and Jerusalem were going out to him, were, were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Same as in the tabernacle, confession, repentance, forgiveness, turning to God in faith. There is no other way we can get to God. There's only one way into the presence of God and that is through the blood of Jesus. We don't get to him by working ourselves up into a frenzy. We don't get to him through doing good works and trying to please him. We, we just come in humility and honesty and faith and truth and meaning through the blood of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 40 describes what is also um, uh, explained in the Gospels of the message of John the Baptist. It says, in the wilderness a voice cries, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. And what will happen? The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And there it was again, confession, repentance, faith. The valley, the things that, 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 that we lack in our lives, God wants to fill them up. The high things, the proud, stubborn, rebellious things he wants to bring down. I believe God wants to come in a new way into new life and through us into our community. We want the glory of God to be revealed and it will be by this way into the holiest. The tabernacle was also called the tabernacle of witness. Do you remember as Balaam looked down from the mountains of Moab, I think it was, he saw the glory of God. He saw the presence of God. He saw that pillar of cloud and fire in the middle of the camp of Israel. It was a witness to the nations and the nations trembled. And for us, we owe it to the world to let this glory, this presence of God be seen in the church, in our part of the church. This is what Paul meant when he describes an unbeliever coming into a church gathering. 
He described it as this, like this in 1 Corinthians 14. He is convicted by all. He is called to account by all. The secrets of his heart are disclosed and so falling on his face he will worship God and declare that God is really among you. Those are the key words. God is really among you, among you in a real way, an almost tangible way that when people are in the presence of God's people, they feel something different. Jesus described this in John 13. He said this, By this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The distinguishing thing about the people of God should be their love for one another. It will be the thing that makes the church a tabernacle of witness that shines out to others the glory of God. And in Acts, the church is described this way. Many signs and wonders, verse uh, 12 of chapter 5, were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles. And they were all together in Solomon's portico. What were they doing? They were, they were praying, they were praising, they were, they were listening to the apostles' teaching. And it says in verse 13, none of the rest dared join them, but the people held them in high esteem. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. And this is what I pray. This is what we are praying for. One of the things I find myself praying about, I've actually got it written down on a prayer list, is that we will have something to witness about. A witness is just somebody that tells people about what they have seen and heard. If we haven't experienced God for ourselves, or it's not living or alive, or maybe it once was but is no more, we have nothing to be witnesses about. May God give us something real. God is really amongst you. One of the things um, I'd, uh, yeah, I'd like to mention um, about this tabernacle is that uh, though it was inhabited by God's glory, it was made up entirely of the possessions of the Jews. As Joe's pointed out, every piece of bronze and gold, the jewels in the high priest's clothes, we know that the, the laver, the giant washing bowl, was made up of the mirrors of the women in the camp. And the gold from their jewels was used to make up the gold parts of the furniture. Everything was a contribution of the people. Recently, a verse of scripture uh, jumped out at me in a very clear way, and it was in Judges 5.2. I was reading about Deborah and Barak, and this was the song of Deborah. And this is what she sang about. She said that the leaders took the lead in Israel, that the people offered themselves willingly. Bless the Lord. Have you got that? That the leaders took the lead that the people offered themselves willingly. Bless the Lord. This is our prayer. There were leaders in the building of this tabernacle. One of them was called Bezalel. After Moses, the leader, received the instructions, he gave them to Bezalel. It says in Exodus 31, See, I call by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with ability and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver and bronze, in cutting stones for working and in carving wood, to work in every craft. His job was to be a craftsman, to build that furniture in the tabernacle. And he had a disciple. Ohaliab, he was called. Behold, I've appointed with him Ohaliab, the son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Dan, and I have given to all able men ability. If you and I have an ability, it is a God-given ability. That they make all that I have commanded you. 
You may feel like the little Galilean boy. Do you remember when Jesus wanted to uh, feed the 5,000? They said, who's got some food? And this little guy came up and he said, I've got um, a, a couple of loaves and a few small fish. Jesus took that little offering. Now, you may think that your offering is very small. What have I got to offer to the church? What have I got to offer to the world? But we've all got something to offer, some talent. We've all got time. We've all got prayer. We've all got the ability to love others. Let's offer to him what we have. So if you are a leader this morning, I believe God's call to you is to lead. It says in Romans 12, let those that lead, lead with diligence in whatever area of service and responsibility God has given you. God is saying to you today, let the leaders lead. Put yourself into it. Pray about it. Make what you do the best. And for all of us, God's call is to offer ourselves willingly. So let's pray. Father, I want to thank you that you sent your son, you gave him to us, and he offered himself willingly, willingly a whole and perfect sacrifice with nothing held back. He gave his all, his soul, his life, his body. He gave his back to the smiters. But before then, he gave 33 years of perfect living as a, as a, a living sacrifice, an offering to you. Father, would you give us grace? Help us to see the gifts that you've given to us. Help us to be part of that tabernacle of your presence that you are forming upon the earth. Let us offer ourselves to you today in Jesus' name. Amen.